In 2007, when the economy collapsed here in this local area, God gave us grace to navigate a narrow place. But all along the way, we continued to decree what God had promised. We continued to, dec- to live in a place where we were saying, we understand the reality of where we're living now, but we're going somewhere. And sometimes that's the mentality that we have to get. We've got to keep our eyes on the prize and keep our eyes on the vision that God has given to us so that we can have grace to run the race. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Got anybody here that's competitive? We're not talking about being competitive against your brother and sister. We're talking about you being competitive with yourself. Come on, stirring yourself up, activating yourself. Sally, how old were you when you ran your first marathon? A uh, half marathon. Sixty-one. That's how old I'll be this year. I'm probably not going to follow in your footsteps. <laughs> but I admire you. Sally was at a place where she could barely walk. Did you know that? How, how far could you walk without pain? 100 yards. But you know what? She started training. Every day, she started training. And now, today, how many years later? She doesn't know how many years later, but you've run how many half marathons? 110 half marathons How many full marathons? Ten full marathons. When at the age of 61, she could barely walk 100 yards. Come on, if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You know what he's saying? He's saying we got to learn to suck it up. Can I say that in church? We've got to have vision to run the race. Number two, we've got to have grace to run with patience. Don't you just love this word, patience? <laughs> the re- run the race that's set before you. This word, patience, is an interesting Greek word. It's the word hupomone. Say it with me. Hupomone. Hupomone. And it means cheerful, hopeful endurance. So let me just give you what um, one of the the commentators, the Bible commentaries, had to say about this word hupomeno, hupomone. It means it is the picture of a person who is under a heavy burden but has refused to surrender to defeat because he knows he is in his place. Because this person knows he is where he is supposed to be. He has decided that regardless of what uh, tried to come against him, he is going to stay put and refuse to move. It's a little bit of a, uh, I know that some of you came for a sweet little Christian message this morning, but I'm going to challenge you to start digging deep, putting a demand on the anointing. Listen, l- listen to what, how the Webster's uh, defines this word patience. It means enduring with joy. We could just do like an altar call right here for how many times we have tried to have patience but not endured with joy. It means the bearing of provocation, annoyance, misfortune, or pain without complaint, loss of temper, or irritation. The altars are open. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. (laughs) Listen, if God is saying he's going to shake some things, how many understand we're liable to go through some provocation, some annoyance, some misfortune or pain, and we might just be, content, we might just be tempted to complain, lose our temper, or get just flat out irritated? Is that true? 
I won't ask for a show of hands of who was irritated this week. So I'm going to read you a few scriptures to wash our minds today. Okay, are you ready for some scriptures to wash our minds? I'm going to read two scriptures, but I'm going to read it in several translations. We'll go quick. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. My brethren and my sister, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. How many feel like you could grow just a little bit, okay? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience, hupomone, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and, and, and complete, lacking nothing. Let's read that same thing in the Living Bible, which is a paraphrase. But they say this, Dear brothers, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy. Some of y'all are looking at me like I lost my mind, okay? I'm just reading the Bible. For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow. And don't try to squirm out of any of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything, strong in character, full and complete. How many want that last part of the sentence? Amen? Then we got to go through the first part of the sentence. The message translation, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Are you feeling edified yet? All right, one more, one more uh, translation, the Passion Translation. My fellow believers, when it, comes, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of endurance. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. How many want to come to the place where there's nothing missing, there's nothing lacking, amen? Then we've got to get our heart positioning right whenever we go through a trial. One more scripture. 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Paul's saying we can be, uh, let me just point out, these verses were written while Paul was in a Roman prison. Can I say that again? They were written while he was in prison. So here, let's listen to the Living Bible. Dear friends, don't be bewildered or surprised when you go through the fiery trials ahead, for this is no strange, unusual thing that's going to happen to you. Instead, be really glad, because these trials will make you partners with Christ in his suffering, and afterward, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory in that coming day when it will be displayed. How many want to share in God's glory? Amen. First Peter 4, 12 in the message. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. I want to read that again because I think that when some things shake, some people are going to say, where is God? Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Come on, glory just around the corner. I love it. One last translation. Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, don't be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice. Look at your neighbor and say, continue to rejoice. For you, in a measure, have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one so that you can share in the revelation of his glory and celebrate with even greater gladness. <laughs>